Welcome back to Modified Country USA. Prior to the running of the Flemington Speed and Sport 100, pre-race ceremonies were held out on the front straightaway. Let's take a look. And here's Belvedere, New Jersey's Bobby Hummer, driver of the R7, receiving the Hard Luck Award from Dean Reynolds, representing Area Auto Racing News, and Bill Singer presiding over the ceremonies here. Bobby Hummer flips his R7 in his qualifying heat race. And Steve Barrick of Program Dynamics presented the Monster Driver Award to small block campaigner Johnny Tanner, driver of the 17D. Johnny Tanner hails from Newtown, Pennsylvania, receiving the most popular small block driver award. Andy Belmont from uh, Design 500 presented the best appearing car and crew award to uh, the Brophy crew of Jerry Brophy, driver of the 519. Tough break for Bobby Hummer, but congratulations to Johnny Tanner and Jerry Brophy. And incidentally, Ron, Jerry Brophy is building a car for the 1991 season of Flemington to run in the dirt asphalt. That's correct. And next up, let's take a look at the highlights of the Flemington Speed and Sport 100 Small Block Modified Feature Event. Paul Rochelle III in the 16 and Doug Hoffman in the 125 bring the field down for the start of the Flemington Speed and Sport 100. Doug Hoffman jumps to the lead from his outside starting position as the field moves through between turns one and two. Billy Pouch here seen chasing Doug Hoffman in the 125 in their battle for first and second. Here, Brett Hearn and Jimmy Horton a little further back in the pack. Here, Ron Babbitt slows his car to a stop on the outside, and a couple of cars get together as the field tries to make their way by. Now, as the race restarts, a lap 23, Billy Pouch, the leader, Doug Hoffman second, Brett Hearn third. One lap later, Pouch brings his car to a stop. He's out of the race. On the restart, Brett Hearn powers his way around the outside of Doug Hoffman to take the lead. Jimmy Horton running a close third. Here, Brett Hearn leading Hoffman second, Horton third, and now Toby Tobias Jr. has worked his way up to fourth. Here, cars coming off a of turn four. Hoffman and Tobias get together. Tobias gets sideways across the track. Dave Graham collects them. And a couple of cars getting together, and more than a couple of cars, a 10 car pileup. Here on the replay, we see Hoffman and Tobias getting together, coming off of turn four, and the two cars coming together again in one. And of course, Tobias getting hammered as the field comes by and comes to a stop. On the next restart, Brett Hearn jumps out back out to the lead. Doug Hoffman second, the two separated by a lap car. Hoffman works his way by the lap car on the inside. On the next restart, Hearn pulls away. Hoffman slows on the inside. Car rolling slow, Hoffman out of the Flemington Speed and Sport 100. The race continues. Brett Hearn makes his way by lap traffic on the inside. Here, Kevin Collins and Jimmy Horton trying to wait to work their way by Ron Babbitt in the five. Danny Johnson tries the inside of Brett Hearn. He's now in second. A tough battle as they go by Jerry Brophy. Here, Brett Hearn works his way through lap traffic, going into turn four. Danny Heber on the inside. Kevin Collins and Jimmy Horton continue their battle for third and fourth. Buck Ward collects the wall in between one and two, again bringing out the yellow in the 100. On the restart, Brett Hearn pulls away. Danny Johnson second, Jimmy Horton in third. White flag waving for Brett Hearn, sizable lead, almost a straightaway lead now. It's Brett Hearn coming off his dominance in Super Dirt Week in Syracuse, looking to sweep the weekend, the final weekend of dirt here at Flemington. Now off the fourth turn, Brett Hearn wins the Flemington Speed and Sport 100, Danny Johnson second, Jimmy Horton third. Now we'll see Brett Hearn going to Victory Lane festivities here with the Flemington Speed and Sport banner. Brett Hearn winks to the crowd here and seen pictured with Flemington Speed Sport Mike Corcoran, starter Harry D, Miss Flemington Speedway, Joe Hall, and promoter Paul Cool. Ron Bailey caught up with Brett Hearn in Victory Lane. The car really felt good right from the first lap. Uh, the Freightliner car tonight was just excellent. It was perfect. I want to thank a couple guys, uh, Mark Canyon Ford and uh, Tony File, a couple of our main supporters here at the track, and uh, especially Freightliner Trucks in Newburgh, and my car owner, Ray Bramble, and 
Uh, this has been a, been a super year for us, you know, and each time we just add another win to it, it just makes it that much sweeter. Well, Brett Hearn, after uh, the big Syracuse week, some people were saying we should change the name of that from Super Dirt Week to Super Brett Week. <laughs> Brett Hearn, you were so awesome up there. Is this going to be uh, Brett's weekend here? I don't know. You know, uh, the modified car felt good in hot laps, too, but this car felt especially good tonight right from the start, and uh, I was real confident going into the race, and, and then when they dropped the green flag and we just started moving to the front, I said, uh, we, got a, we got a darn good shot at this one, you know, and... Uh, Pouchy, uh, he dropped out, unfortunately. I would have liked to measure up to him and see how fast I really was, but uh, we didn't get a chance to find out, but, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. That's right, racing is a game of breaks, and a lap 28, Billy Pouch dropped out. What went through your mind when you saw Pouch slowing? Well, I thought that I was a little quicker than the front two at that time, Doug and, uh, and Billy. I just didn't know how I was going to get by Doug, and as it turned out, I got by him on the, uh, on the restart there, but um, I was looking forward to a, a jingle with about three cars in it, uh, Pouchy, Hoffman, and myself, and I was really looking forward to that, and it, it changed around a little bit, but uh, the end result is just as good for us. Well, Brett Hearn, congratulations, and good luck tomorrow on the Chamois Shy 200. Thank you very much. Brett Hearn, with his best year ever in racing, continued his dominance with the victory in the Flemington Speed and Sport 100. A look at the past with the vintage stock cars when Modified Country USA returns. With this being the last weekend on dirt and the end of an era, we had the vintage stock cars in to perform in front of the Chamois Shine 200 crowd. You get to take a look at what the sedans and the old coupe-bodied cars looked like at the Flemington Speedway. Prior to the modified qualifying races, the Vintage Stock Car Club took to the Speedway with their race cars all bunched up here on the initial start. Gerald Chamberlain on the outside in row number one in the red 76 Chamberlain, former Flemington Speedway champion on the outside. Chamberlain will make contact here in turn number two. Chamberlain, after making contact, hits the outside wall and comes to a stop there on the back stretch, narrowly avoiding disaster. Right rear flat tire here on vintage stock car number 10. Now later in the day with the vintage race cars, we'll have the four legends, Billy Osmond, Sammy Beaver, Sam Plosky, and Gerald Chamberlain in a legends match race. Now making their way onto the final lap here, Rick Altimos in car number eight on the outside battling for the lead in the vintage stock car feature event here. Around the outside going down the back is Rick Altimos in number eight taking over the lead in the vintage stock car race. Harry D with a checkered flag for Ultimo. Gerald Chamberlain certainly thrilled the crowd in the Bullock 76 and kicked up some mud while he was doing that. And now we'll take a look at the qualifying heats for the Chamois Shine 200. Looking at some of the qualifying action for the Chamois Shine 200, here in the fifth qualifying heat, Danny Johnson charges from his outside front row to take the lead on the inside, followed by Scott Kenya. Now, a little further back in the pack, Sammy Beavers, who showed up today to run the Legends race, got a ride that modified and is here trying to qualify and get into the Chamois Shine 200. Beavers in the black number 57 trails Bob McCready in the number nine as they go through turn number one. McCready on the inside now. Beavers continues his try. The fans on their feet. But Beaver sticks his nose on the inside of McCready, going in turn one of McCready. Powers the car back around on the outside to gain that final qualifying position back. The race winds down. The checkered flag now falling for Danny Johnson as he comes off of turn four. And the last lap run, Sammy Beavers trying to qualify. Sticks his nose underneath, but falls short of one position in qualifying. In the sixth heat, Doug Hoffman jumped out from his outside front row starting position to take the lead. Hoffman won yesterday's dash for cash. Looks like the favorite going into the Chamois Shine 200 as he wins the sixth qualifying heat race. First modified county for the Chamois Shine 200. Ray Swinehart in the 33 bounces off the first turn wall, collects Kelly. A couple of cars spin around there at the first modified county. Dean Gulick went on to win in the number 7D. Now, the second county. Ken Wismer jumps out to the lead, followed by Joe Coverdale and Jeff Cool. Again, three cars to qualify, and this is the second modified county for the Chamois Shine 200. Here, Ken Wismer leads them down the back into turn three. Ken Wismer in the number 89 will win the second modified county for the Chamois Shine 200. 